All right, so now that Sam's awake, good weekend. We can go ahead and take a look at this, and we need to look at what properties we're going to want to use. Okay, James? Yes, sir. All right, so first of all, before I can even do any kind of properties, we always want to get rid of kind of what we say, like all this extra stuff that's going on. I have multiple, I'm multiplying my function by six. I can get rid of that, right? Before I start getting into logarithms, I know I can get rid of that. So I'm going to divide by six on both sides. And I know that's gonna give us something nasty, 11 divided by six. It's not rational, but, or, you know, it's not gonna be an integer, but that's okay. Log base three of point, or zero, point five. 11 over six, yes. Don't you have took the six and made an exponent? You could have made it a six as an exponent as well, yes. Um, our problem is though, that's um, that's not really going to, well it's, it's not, it's, it's something wrong, but what's gonna help us is that's gonna an exponent, right? Exponents mean, if, you know, if that's an exponent, then you're gonna have to take the sixth root of something to get it rid of an exponent, right? So you, you always, it's probably helpful to understand that rule to always want to keep your exponents in front. But yes, you could have rewritten as a sixth as the sixth power. But then you need to remember, Audrey, that you have it written as a sixth power, you have to take the sixth root to get rid of it eventually. So helpful, try to always write them, keep them like this, because I'm sure you'd probably rather deal with dividing and multiplying than dealing with roots. But you're you would get the same answer if you worked it out that way. Alright, so now I have this equation, right? So now what we need to do is figure out, well, what property of logarithms can I use now to solve for this? And we're gonna use a couple other properties. You guys remember this property, log base A of A equals X, right? The same thing is true, there's a very similar prop property that says A raised to log of A of X equals X. So when I said, you guys need to know your properties like inside and out. I wasn't joking, all right? You guys have to know these properties. They're very, very simplistic, but if you guys can just have these properties memorized, it's gonna make your life doing this test yeah, very, very easy, okay? Please, guys, go back and study these properties so you understand. You guys should know, oh, I'm sorry, that's raised to the X power. You remember that log, whenever you're taking the base of A, of evaluating a raised to the x power that equals x because a raised to a, a, a raised to what power gives you a that's one so you just cancel that and you're left with x. Here it's the exact same thing. Whenever you have a number and you're raising it to a logarithm of the base of what that base is for your exponent, it's going to equal x. Then the next two properties we've talked about is I go over this example all the time. So you guys should know that you have log of x equals log of y, then x equals y, right? That's the one-to-one -one property. The same thing is true with this. If I say, if I was to work this log, if I was to work this backwards and I said x is equal to 10, then you could also say 2 raised to the x equals 2 raised to the 10, right? You could take any, you could make whatever base you want to. As long as, if you say x equal to 10, you can make them as exponents. It doesn't matter as long as your bases are the same. Does that kind of make sense? Right, just like I could say, you know, x plus 10, or I'm sorry, x is equal to 10. You could also say x minus one is equal to 10 minus one. As long as you do it to both sides, that's okay. So what I'm looking at here is I have a logarithm. I need to get rid of this logarithm. There's two ways I can get rid of the logarithm. One, I could transfer it to exponential form, this is logarithmic form. I could transfer it to exponential form. That is one way. The other way you could do it is you could also say, well, what happens if I raised both of these two um, from the third power? Or from the base of three. So I log base three of 0 0.05. God, why do I keep writing that like that? 0 0.5x. Thank you for adding that. And the reason why I'd want to raise both of these as exponents with the base three is because now using my ex um, using my rule of law properties of logarithms, I know this is now just going to equal. That's just going to cancel out the one, so I'm left with point five x 
equals 3 to 11 over 6. Did you ever see the jump I made? No. Yes, Mom. When she got that same result from just changing it to exponential form. I know, that's what I did. Yep. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I'm going to show that next, too. It's just a different way. I'm just showing this elongated way, too. Because it is helpful, though, to understand that you guys can raise it to the same power to get rid of that logarithm. Because when you ever guys getting rid of logarithm, you have to understand there's, you know, there's a couple ways. And sometimes transfer it to exponential form might not be always the simplest way to see it. And then from here, I just divide by 0.5. So therefore, x equals 3 to 11 over 6 divided by 0.5. That's not right. So That's they got, they got two, huh? It's 2 instead of 3. That's what I got, too. Yeah, but that. they have a 2 in front of the 3. Like you get the okay, same hold answer. on, hold on, hold on. We'll just go ahead and look at the answer, okay? I'll just go through it, and I'll look at the answer. The other way, like I said, that we can go back through and look through, um, by change it to exponential form, what Vaughn was saying is you could also just say, remember guys, what does the logarithm says? It says 3 raised to what number gives you 0.5 raised to x? So it'd be 3 raised to this. So you can easily just transfer it to exponential form. All right? Just change that's logarithmic form. This is exponential form. That's what we did in what, section 3.2? You guys need to know that over and over and over. Then you can just divide by 0.5. Okay, and that's the end of everything. And I'll show you 